In this problem, we're given an array a with n integers, and we can perform the following operation no more than n times. And in this operation, we pick some uh, value in the array, ai, and then we add its value to one of its neighbors, either ai minus 1 or ai plus 1. And once we do that, we take out a ai from this array. So over time, this array gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, and in the end, we want to find out the minimum number of operations uh, we would need to uh, do such that all the elements in A are equal, right? Uh, so the first key thing to notice is that the sum always stays constant. This is because uh, since we're adding AI to its neighbor and then taking away AI out, the net change is zero. So therefore, if you look at the example that they gave, uh, the sum is always 18 in every single array a right so once we know that the sum is constant we can just iterate over all the final sizes of the array so what does that even mean so I'll let's go through this example uh, and then oops, put here and then let's add one five and then six right so the sum is constant, right? So in this case, the sum is uh, 24, right? And we want to find the minimum number of operations. So that means that the final size of this array A should be as large as possible. So the possible sizes of this array could range anywhere between 1 all the way until, in this case, 7, right? So let's start from 7 and go all the way down to 1 because we know there is always an answer 1. So 7. Uh, if the array size is 7, then we should check that a, if 24 mod 7 is an integer. Uh, sorry, if a, a 7 divides 24. And in this case it doesn't, so we move on to 6. Does 6 divide 24? Yes. So we know if there are six elements in the final array, every element should be equal to four. And we know that's clearly not right because we have this number six here. And six is bigger than four, so therefore we'll never get that. So when we look at five, does 24 divide five? Sorry, does five divide 24? No, four, yes it does. Uh, so here, 24 divided by four equals Right. So what this tells us is that uh, if our array size was 4, then every element would have to be 6. Now, is that possible? Right. So we can just go here. Okay. This is 6. Yes. We can group these together. That's 6. We can group these together. 6. We can group this together. 6. So yes. So now we know that our answer is when our final size is going to be 4. So therefore, it's going to be n, n minus this. So our answer would be 3. So uh, the key thing is, let's say we we find this valid size, right? Four. H how do we sum up these numbers uh, such that uh, we we follow this rule? And the key thing is, we're summing up numbers that are next to each each other, right? So uh, any any number linked to this. So this number could only sum up with this number. This can only sum up with this number. So we always look at numbers that are next to each each other, right? So let's say we reach this six threshold, right? So that's fine. Now we look at this three. Uh, can this three combine with this two to make a number that's less than equal to six? Yes. So then we do this merge. Now we still stay here. Can this five combine with this number to make a number less than equal to six? Yes. So we merge that. And then this is our value six. So now we move on. Can our one merge with the value to its right to make the number six? Yes. And then, yeah, we're done. So the key thing is just to uh, realize that the sum is constant, and then we can go through all the possible uh, sizes of all possible final sizes of this array A. Uh, and yeah. So as usual, in T, C, and T, oops, while T minus minus. And then we're given in n, and so let's read in everything into a, into a vector called a, and 
So it's all, let's also find the sum at the same time, right? Let sum equal zero. Let's read in ai, but at the same time, let's increment sum. So this way, we'll always know what the sum is going to be. Like the, yeah, it, th th this is just, uh, we, we just read in the element, and at the same time, we add it to our sum counter. Uh, so let's, so initially, it's going to be impossible. We, we haven't solved it, right? So for int, so since we want to find the least number of operations, again, that means that the final array A should be as big as possible. So we should go from final size to be as large as possible all the way until one, right? Because that's the final thing. Then just keep on decreasing by one. So if sum mod i, that means that if sum mod i does not equal zero, then we continue because this isn't a, the, a valid final uh, size for the array i. Otherwise, just go if current sum is zero, uh, then for j between n, pair sum plus equal to j. So now, if our current sum is bigger, actually, I'll just call this sum. Our goal is going to be sum over i, right? So if our current sum is bigger than our goal, then it's not possible. So we just break and you move on to. So we break out of this for loop and then we move on to the next uh, i in this for loop. Uh, otherwise, if the current sum is equivalent to goal and okay, let's do this case first. So if our current sum is equivalent to our goal, then we just set current sum back to zero and then uh, if the hmm, what I do here. Yeah, if the oops, first sum is equivalent to the goal and we are currently at our last number, it means we have we are we were able to go through the whole uh, list A and group all the numbers such that their sum equals this goal. So then we can just set impossible equals zero. Right? So then that makes sense, right? Or, yeah. So then, if it's ever the case that it's not impossible, then we just output our answer, which is n minus i, and then we break. Oops. And we want to break because there could be more than one answer, right? Because we know there's always an answer when um, the final size is one. So. We, we want to prevent that by breaking. I think this should work. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so just to go over this one last time. Um, what did I put it to the 632115, right? So we just keep on, we look at the final size of the array because we know the sum. And since we know the sum, we know given the final size of the array, what each value in that array sh should be. So in this case, like we saw here, if the final size of the array is four, then we know that each, since the sum is always 24, that each value in this final array should be six. And we're able to do that by grouping this number, this number, these numbers, and this number. And the key thing is, since the operation only does so with adjacent operations, we just have to group numbers that are next to each other. And uh, that's the key thing. So yeah, hopefully this passes the test cases. And voila.